a couple of weeks before Easter, uh, the year of 2015, and so uh, during this Lent time, we think about uh, what you saw uh, did in preparation for what was coming. And uh, so today, uh, we are going to look at uh, an example that he set for us in the spirit of being uh, who he took. Uh, Got to remember the name of the word here. Hold on just a minute. We John Yazdi, bravery. And that word is a little different from the warrior term for brave, so in, in the language. So, but we're going to look at what that means today. And so doing, we're going to turn our Hebrew Bibles to the book of Jeremiah the prophet, the prophet Jeremiah, uh, 31, 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says God, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Jacob, or Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, the covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says God. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says God. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, No God, for they shall all know me, for the least of them to the greatest, says God. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. And for our New Testament reading today, we're going to turn to John E. Ayah Delami, 12, 20 through 33. Ilona, Ia nas di aginoia, Elangi, Unali doli, Cha di lanhi, Ilista yadi, Ale, Is di gawala jilagi, Quiligi, Queja idi, Gadu hum, Elili, Ihi, Ale, Gawata yo, Selangi, I knew we way suggy. O God, you leave, huh? O Jigawa, Dadi, Isa. We leave you. Ulu, Jagi, Ale, Idini, Uno, Logi, Na, Pono, E, Nida, E, Ale, Ligi, Isa, Bonino, Ne, Logi. Jisa no dani jan le magi i a na we sagi na po us kwa lama ya we kwe ji a ji la po do ni i udo hi ya hi ya udo hi ya hi ya i a ni ja we sanga. Ayano Sako Ujalezdi Ugata Eladi Nawo Jana Ale Nugosana Gigi Uwa Sako Geso Nigo Hilahi Iosdi Gini Ugohi Ujado Kanekogo Gilo Angi Yase Sti Gana I Uyo Has De Gese De Gilo Nam Has Ga Gese De 
ganohi ani elohi ge sanhi nasi bhuskwani do do di es seis di ganigna vinastana i ge san gazdi ki iyano di lo jena sedas ki Nigaris di skes di Nas di agis da wa te gis di Ge ano na ha nas ko Jis na se das di i hez di I gano ke lo che nas di is di Nigaris di i di Nas di i do da Ala ko do di es ni is di. A ko, a ko do na do, o de ya ta ne ha, a do do. Da ga da ni. Has go na da si si. I do da, sko da la gi, yo hi is, ye sa ni. A se no na si gi, Yasdi, Jagis di Kuala Hani, Gohi, Agis Kuala Di Ye, Agila Chani. Ido da, Ila Kuo da, Des da do i hani, Ano Kuo go, Na di la di. Da ya ne jagi, Ia na da wa, We sangi, Ga la ya, Agilang po tana ale talini da jilang po tani Yawi no na ha anido na i unada gana ayanda po los ka unada na i nihiski yesa nadagi esdo da iya Tanega chi gana nago jiga Nakohi a elohi dado yegan gadonili Anako rogan huyanhi Ia elohi uje lagi Daye ji nago wisi Aseno Iyono Elohi Mugi Sela Da Naha Nani Ya Yawi Do Da Ga Se Anhi Nazi Ya Nawe Sangi Nazi Ya Liz Da Ne Di Ya Uyo Han Is Di Da Ga Na Ga Ki Amen and in English. John 12, 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whosoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant. There I will keep my servant. Ah, hang on, I guess whatever. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, God will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? 
God, save me from this hour? No, for it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. God, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was a thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. He saw answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Sometimes it is very difficult for us to prepare ourselves for life-changing events. When I was 14 years old, one of my closest friends, younger sister, was diagnosed with bone cancer. She was a bright and cheerful, compassionate and caring young lady who embraced life and embraced people. She knew in advance, well in advance, that she was going to have to have her leg amputated. Her left leg was amputated. And this was a life-changing event of great significance because if it hadn't been done, she was certain to die. But there was also the risk that the surgery wouldn't succeed. And she faced this challenge with great bravery. She accepted that she had to go through this surgery. And even to this day, I remember vividly visiting her in the hospital room, seeing her laying there with one leg gone. And she was joy. She wasn't feeling sorry for herself. She was cheering people up who were coming in, pitying her, feeling sorry for themselves, for the loss, the shock, the trauma that the whole community was having to suffer because we were a part of a really large community at the time. And she was she was greatly endeared by everyone over thousands of people that I know that we were a part of at the time. And she set such a wonderful example because she was a believer. She trusted in God. She trusted in Spirit. And she knew in her heart that God has the ability to make something good come from anyone. And we don't know what was going on with everyone involved, but we do know that she was an inspiration to everyone, including me. And uh, about this time, we got orders to, to go overseas again. My dad was in the military at the time. We were here in Oklahoma. And, uh, so, you know, uh, it was there was a lot going on, you know, we were, she was dealing with this, a lot of changes, I was going from ninth grade into high school, or the 10th grade, I was actually in the 10th grade at the time, and we were, I was getting ready to transition to another school overseas, and doing all kinds of stuff, there was a lot going on, and, and yet, her willingness to accept the, the significant life change that was presented to her made things easier. A 
a month after we got to Athens, Greece, I got a letter in the mail from her family, her brother, informing me that she had died. The cancer, some cells from the cancer that had broken loose during the surgery, and the blood clot also had gone through her lungs and she had, she had died. And so that was a tremendous loss. I deeply grieved uh, the family and the loss because they were a good family and still are. Uh, and, uh, but the bravery, the courage to accept this life change has stayed with me all this time, all these years. And so that I continue to think about this whenever I'm faced with a life-changing event, even to this day. It's helped me, her courage has helped me get through some really challenging difficulties myself. And so, uh, this is what Jesus was faced with in this passage. The coming of the Greeks, and according to the Gospel of John, and John and Mark are different from Matthew and Luke, in that Mark and John support Jesus as a Nazarene, and Matthew and Luke try to separate Jesus from the Nazarene group. Uh, and so Jesus' beliefs, values, and beliefs helped him to come to a place in this time when the Greeks showed up. He knew that this is the moment when uh, time was up. He knew that this big life change that was about ready to happen was now. It's on. This is it. Uh, and you know some of the some of the writers uh, it's about you know this this particular set of verses talk about uh, some of the cultural expectations. Samuel Adams in here says that the Greeks never actually got to talk to Jesus, uh, according to the, these writings in Mark and in John both, and never actually got doesn't say anywhere here where he talked to them, but instead he saw addressed his disciples at this very moment and said, now is the time. Get ready. And he himself, when he realized that here's the time, he was fearful. And, you know, there was some confusion about whether or not, uh, you know, they being Jews, if, they were, if he was going to start helping the non-Jews, because that's come up before with the Samaritans, and he helped Samaritan and others. But that wasn't what he was talking about, and he had to explain it to them. He, he had to talk to them about what he meant by said, now is the time. He had to say, this is the time when I have to get ready to die. And he used a beautiful illustration. The grain of wheat. Those who live in the cities might not really buy, understand the significance of that, but you go out like where we live, we're all surrounded by wheat fields. We know that one seed has to die, go into the ground, germinate, and from that new life, new beginning, arises. And a great crop comes from that. One seed if everything goes in a good way. And Jesus was fearful at that moment. The sudden realization that time was up hit him. And he was like, well, you know, do I ask God to take this from me so I don't have to go through it? And then he stopped and said, no. He feared the change. He had been living his life for a long time like every other human being. He had grown up, lived with family, community, doing his ministry, you know, fulfilling his purpose and never really getting into it. 
And then, you know, the clock comes to that point where it says, okay, time's up. Here's your two-week notice. Get ready. And, uh, and he, he faced it with courage. Great bravery. Great bravery. Because not only did he overcome his fear, but he also inspired his followers to have a better understanding of how important it is to go through this process. How important for the whole world, for all of us, for him to go through this process. And so as we think about what's coming ahead, we think about how you saw accepted this significant life changing event for him. And uh, we also see, and this is not, not very many times did God talk to the disciples or to the people around Jesus. I mean, we, we hear the story of uh, God speaking to Jesus at the time of the baptism. But this is the, the next one that we know of where the, God actually speaks before we get to the book of Acts where Jesus spoke and here we see that God is speaking affirming who Jesus is and why this is important and this coincides with what the prophet Jeremiah is talking about in Jeremiah you know many many uh, many Christians both in the Catholic Church and the Protestant movement over, over the centuries have believed or at least prescribed this passage as a prophecy of the coming of Jesus, when in fact it really wasn't. Uh, this, this particular passage was, uh, you know, talking about, uh, I believe, uh, post-exilic, I, I might have to do some history, historical look at it. Speaking of life changes, off the subject here a little bit, not really, I guess. Uh, we were up late last night helping one of our dogs because of a life-changing event in the form of a tick that has unfortunately passed on uh, Lyme disease, so we're treating him for that now. And that's a big event for him. So it's not just people that have to deal with life changes, animals have to go through this too. Um, but this particular passage in Jeremiah, they're talking about out with the old, in with the new. God's saying at this point, you know, in the past, everything was written down on paper. You had the book of the law that the priests were in charge of. And that didn't work out so well. So now things have changed. We've been through the hard times. Everything's all cleaned out. We're going to start over fresh. New life, new beginning opportunity here for the people of Israel. The work, writing it down in the book, it didn't work so well, so now I'm going to write it in your heart, in your soul. So you're going to know right and wrong, good and bad. You're going to know how important it is to love your neighbor and to love God. Because I'm going to put it in your soul and you're not going to be able to miss it. Honoring the sacredness of God and the sacredness of life is written in our souls by God. And knowing this helps us to understand how we got to Jesus. Because even though God wrote it in people's hearts, they still ignore it. And they continue to still ignore it. And in so doing, bring bad luck upon themselves, upon each other, the whole world human community, a lot of pain and suffering, unnecessary pain and suffering going on. You know, I've talked about this before. People imagine what if people actually got it and they realized that, you know, helping to improve the quality of life of all people is more important than domineering and being the top dog. The valuing human beings, valuing life was greater than valuing gold money. Imagine the world we could live in today. We'd already be colonizing other planets. 
so much time, energy, and effort would have already gone into scientific development over the last 2,000 years. We would be way ahead of where we are today. I firmly believe that. We are way behind where we're supposed to be right now. And so, as a, as a, as a species. So, what life-changing events have you had to face where you had, you didn't have a willingness to accept it. You had advanced warning, and you didn't really look about, look for how can God make something good come from this? How can I be an inspiration? How many of you hold on to life-changing events as if that's when life stops? And now you're dedicated to sucking the joy of everyone and everyone by constantly reminding and focusing on the negative. For example, I know a woman whose son died at a young age, and she is constantly reminding everyone how much she misses her son. Not a month goes by when that doesn't come up. She never came to a place of acceptance of moving forward and continually reminds the world of how miserable she is because of this life to So you have an opportunity and a choice when it comes to facing life changes because life changes happen. You have a choice between being brave, accepting that change is coming, accepting that it is happening. And trusting in our Creator to make something good come from this, not just for yourself, but for everyone involved, for the many generations to come. Or to make it all about you. Feel sorry for yourself, and drag everybody down, and drive everybody away. You have that choice between being joyful in spirit or being miserable in this world. And Jesus says, those who hate their life and let it go, and what he's talking about, those who turn their back on the pity pot and embrace spirit will live forever. It's through joyfulness, it's through acceptance, it's through bravery that spirit empowers us, strengthens us, and gives us eternal life. Which enables us to move forward in a good way rather than being stuck where we are for all eternity. Your choice. But the reality is that Yohiwa compels us both in the old teachings and in the new teachings, on the Red Road, in the Bible, all the above. Yohiwa compels us to be brave and to move into new life changes that we may be redeemed and help to improve the quality of life for all people. What are you going to choose to do? Walk in peace.